what is going on guys welcome to the wednesday night live stream what's going on ron don tracy shelly how are you guys doing dave it's been a couple weeks so hopefully everyone is doing wonderful today um today we figured we'd just do a bit of a random q a session and yeah it's kind of a good one nice and easy whatever questions you guys have reefing related shoot uh, so start out, Dawn's Reef. What's the best method to get rid of bubble algae? So there's a few different approaches you can take here. Um, one, obviously you can manually remove it. And if you do that, generally if there's a bit of tissue and a bit of stuff left behind, you might want to target that. I tend to use H2O2 or hydrogen peroxide. And what was it, 3% I believe it is? Yeah, so I generally will use something like this. If it will focus, um, just good old hydrogen peroxide and kind of use that to kill at the bases. And that works for most algaes. Um, now, there's also predators that will eat it. Uh, the most common one is probably going to be an emerald crab. Those little guys are great and they'll slowly munch away at it. Um, there's also a fox face. If your tank's big enough, those guys will eat it. Um, now, I've also used Vibrant. I know that one's a bit of more controversial because of the questionably false advertising on the bottle however i have used it to get rid of bubble algae and did work back in the day i had a 20 gallon red sea nano tank and that one had a good chunk of bubble algae in it and it was it took about six weeks and it did get rid of it so it absolutely did work it is an algae side not really bacteria based algae side so um but that's another solution so I would personally manually remove what you could physically, like take a water change hose and a little pick to suck it all out. And then either try and kill off the bases and stuff with dosing a bit of hydrogen peroxide to it, or add some emerald crabs and some kind of natural predators to it. Ron, do you prefer Hydros Controller or Apex pros and cons from your use? So they all have pros and cons. Um, Apex has been, Neptune's been around the longest. It is probably has the most kind of expansion things to it. So overall, I find the Apex easier to do stuff on just because I've used it for so many years. Um, I also have the GHL, which I think is really good hardware, but it's a lot trickier to program and do custom things. Then you have the Hydros, which is like the newer kid, and it's growing its ecosystem. It is pretty easy to program most things, so that's a big plus for it. The, um, the Wi-Fi power strips I've found over time, it kind of does have its own quirks if you don't have good Wi-Fi. So you need really good Wi-Fi for that. They do have a newer one out that is like the brain and the power strip built into one. I think if I was to do it, I'd go for that one because then you don't really have to worry about any of the little Wi-Fi quirks. And then it'd be a solid one. Um, do, do, do. Uh, Chuck, is heavy aeration air bubbles in my return chamber fine? That is absolutely fine, not a big deal. Um, if it's in your return chamber, you're likely going to be getting micro bubbles and do a bit of bubble scrubbing in your tank. Uh, Jake, best way to eradicate the Xenia? That is a tricky one, it is pretty invasive. Um, it's a really cool coral, I absolutely love it, but I've always been afraid to kind of add it to my tanks just because it can spread and can take over. Now you can peel it off of rocks or off of surfaces. And honestly, that's probably your best method is to just try and peel it and work that flesh off. Um, the other thing that you probably could do is use something like kelp paste that kills most things. Just make a very thick kelp, like toothpaste -y type of thing, put it in a syringe and put it directly on top of whatever coral or whatever pest you're trying to kill. And the super high pH generally will kill it. Now you could also use something like F-Aptasia, which does the similar thing, but it creates a bit of a harder coating as well, and that will, would also kill it. So that is the way, but I try peeling it off first. If there's any spots you can't peel it off, maybe just try nuking it that way. Uh, Red Devil, my parameters are on point. ISP came back on point. Curls are still slowly dying. I'm at a loss. Chato isn't growing, even with AI Fuge, right in Core 7, but what am I doing wrong? That is a very good question there, Rev Devil. There is so many things it could be. It could be a bacterial thing in the tank that's affecting it. Um, it could be parameter swings. Like just because, you know, stuff looks good on ICP test, if you're having huge swings all the time, like again, that's gonna piss off your corals. So that really is a tricky one. I'd probably just do a few big water changes to kind of reset things and hopefully stuff bounces back if you, as long as stuff is stable. Uh, Will Comics and Silver. Hola. Hola. Come on. Come on, us. I have a Peninsula 25 gallon aquarium looking for a protein skimmer. What is your recommendations? 
honestly, on a 25 gallon tank, I would skip the protein skimmer and just do like a five gallon week water change and you will probably get more bang for your buck. Um, I've used tons of small protein skimmers and they work, but I don't find they're like amazingly work well. Like they can reduce the need for maintenance, but a one bucket water change you can do in a couple minutes and you'll get probably more benefit than a small skimmer. Throwing that out there, that's probably what I would do on a small tank. Mighty Reefer, is strawberry shortcake a slow grower? Yes, it has. Um, I've had it for a year and it's encrusted on a small frog that hasn't grown much. So some corals will grow like crazy. They're basically like weeds. And there's other ones that will literally do nothing for ages. Like um, the do, 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 golden rod anacropora. That did nothing for ages. And now it's exploding and growing like crazy. So it just takes time for sometimes for it to settle in before it takes off. And that can be three months, it could be six months, but some corals will just take ages until they, you know, settle in and get in their groove and just take off. Barry, just installed my Apex slash Trident today. Very nice. Nice to get back to a normal body position. Yeah, definitely for sure. Yeah, the, tri the Trident's actually pretty good. Um, I've been doing the Trident controlled dosing lately just for my elk. And my tank's actually, just because stuff, like with a bit of a higher pH and stuff's been growing, it's been taking off. Like, it's, my elk consumption's been insane. Because I have the kelk, I have the calcium reactor, which I die back, dialed back in how much I was dripping because of the kelk that I was inserting. And then I, my elk was still going down, so I set up the trident to dose elk on top of that, based off the range. And I think it's up to like 85 mils a day or something crazy, like on top of everything else. So it is nice that it tweaks itself whenever it drops. So that is a kind of a cool feature if you have the dose as well. Uh, Don's Reef, what's an ideal pH range? Eight to 8.03 is a pretty happy range. Um, ideally eight and above is a nice place to be. I lived in the 7.9 realm for a long time. Tank was still fine, but you definitely get better growth if you're above eight. Uh, Tracy, if you want to thin, thin it out, Put in what like onions come in a plastic net laid on top they'll climb on and pull it off huh that's a good tip never thought about that putting a mesh or something to let the coral up the exini climb onto uh jeffrey best way to get rid of aptasia i'd say first main one get an army of bergia those guys are machines um can also use peppermint shrimp or you can attack it with something like a kelp paste or f aptasia i found works really well aquarium cabinet solution what is going on nick long time no see uh, born to be a shooter, Josh, can you think of any reason I would see discosomus withering slowly away and yet my hammer and nems are doing great? It could be one random thing in the tank. On that note, I have a bounce mushroom that was doing phenomenal in my water box. It started, same thing, it shrunk. It wasn't doing as hell, doing very well. I moved into this tank and it's still not doing much, but there's another one beside it that's perfectly happy. So it... I don't know, honestly. Like, I, I'm almost tempted to dip it and see if that makes a difference. Um, John, what is your daily elk swing? Ideally, I like less than 0.1. <laughs> On that note, I overdosed a ton of elk last night. I was modifying my daily dose on... This is the one downfall of the... Uh, the dose and a, somehow apparently I hit the switch over to on and said auto and I looked and I dosed like 200 and some, a couple hundred mils of elk so I bumped my elk from just shy of 7.95 or something and also boosted up to like 9.3 so I had a huge elk swing last night no good um, but yeah normally it's you know 0.1 is what I like to see but I would say within 0.3 of a DKH is acceptable range for a swing Dave, are you still running ozone? Yes, yes I am. Um, just purchased it and wondering if I need a dryer or not with the Poseidon. So you don't need a dryer, but it will make it more efficient. So you'll get more bang for your buck. That being said, I only run my Poseidon like three or four out of 10. So I'm running very low. So I don't really care if it's not as efficiency. Um, the one kind of downfall is over time that moisture could build up. I don't know if it's nitrogen some type of acid inside of it. And basically every like four or five months or every six months or so, you could take RODI water, basically flush out the little chamber inside and remove any of that buildup of the acid and then shoot some compressed air through it and clean it out. Um, that's basically the maintenance that you should be doing if you don't have a dryer. If you have a dryer, it basically just removes the moisture and any potential buildup inside. So now this also being said, it depends on your humidity. If you're in Florida and it's like 80% humidity, it's more of an issue. If you're in like Arizona or somewhere where it's super dry and not that humid, you probably don't even have to bother with it. 
So that's kind of depends on your situation. I personally, I used to run a dryer with the silica beads, but then it just became too much work to constantly dry out the beads every few weeks. So now I just don't bother. One day I might get a dryer, but they're expensive. So it's, it's lower on the priority list, but one, one day maybe. Are you still using the ice cap reactor? If so, do you get your kelk fillet on top of the reactor? Would you buy it again or different? I'm not using the ice cap one right now um, just because it was too big for my other stand. So I'm currently using the fast K2. Um, overall, the ice cap one was good. My only complaint is sometimes if you add too much powder to it, you your magnet could spin out. Um, I put a different me uh, larger magnet into it that better coupled with the bottom so it reduced that. Um, the other comment I'd have is oh, long term, it was starting to wear down a little bit when I was running it very frequently doing more of like the slurry method. So once I um, add a, a little chunk of glass to the bottom so it prevented any of that wear on it if you're running it like excessively kind of like I was. Nick. Dev's next project contribution. Thank you for the 899 super chat, Nick. Much appreciated, buddy. First time reefer, morning from Australia. Good afternoon from Canada. Dave, I don't know if I'm crazy or not, but I think my blue tang has been killing my euphilia. Quite possibly. My hippo tang and my red sea sylvan tang both pick at one of my gargonians. I see them constantly picking at it. So it wouldn't surprise me. They definitely can. I know some of them will pick at Zoas and different things, so definitely plausible. Um, Muhammad, going to be moving soon. Going to put my 260 gallon on the second floor. What's the best way to support the tank from the basement? In my case, it was up against the edge of a semi low bearing wall because it supports the stairs. Um, so I had an engineer come over and look at it and get an idea of like what the support would be for it. And what I did is I took three or four two by sixes and I put them vertically floor to the bottom of the joist to support that edge where the stairwell is because that's where most of the weight is. So I have four two by sixes vertically to add actual structural. Now the tank behind me below in the basement, I added, I believe I added two posts. You can get those little expanding steel posts and I put them in directly probably right around here under this one just to support that beam so there's no extra pressure on it. Um, so if you have space where you can do some kind of support below it, this is going to give you a big peace of mind. Um, do, 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 Adriel stuck at 7.3 pH. That is dang low. Um, really low, man. I would try and figure out why it's like one, maybe look at running a refugium. Two, if you have a lot of CO2 in your house, see if you can do something to get out, you know, leave windows open or outside air to your scammer, but that's really low. Um, or to make sure your pH probe is accurate too. Like that's kind of the level where you're almost not quite dissolving coral skeleton yet, but it's going to be really bad for growth. So that's a tricky one there. Uh, Tony ozone for the win, hundred percent with you, Nick ozone is wonderful for water clarity. It's one of those things you don't want to overdo it, but like you find just enough and then you've got crystal clear water. Now, funny thing I added, uh, so my water was super duper crazy clear normally. I added a diamond goby and then my clear water was gone for like two weeks. It was just made a mess, constantly cloudy with him in there. Now I think he finally worked out, you know, that half of the sand that he's been playing in most of the particles. Now I'm actually getting clear water again. So I'm back to the happy zone, but it took a few weeks. Um, can you suggest three easy starter corals? Cheers. Um, oh, SPS starter corals. What do we have? Green Slimer, super easy, uh, grows very well. Uh, green Goblin and Acropora, that one grows like crazy for me. Uh, Montiporas are generally pretty easy. Orange Satosa is very bright, that one's super hardy. Uh, bird, on, ironically, Bird's Nest has always been like hit or miss for me. But yeah, those are the couple I would go with for super easy happy ones. Uh, AA fish reef bird's nest went asexual spawn all over the tank. Now it's taking my other corals. Oh no. Um, one of my torches are receding. Torches would win over the two. Torches generally do win battles. I would not think bird's nest would be the torch. Uh, I got a 40 breeder. It was going to make the reef tank. Decided to make a frag tank out of it. Need advice. What wave makers would you recommend in the peninsula? In a 40 gallon, I would probably just use a Nero 3 or 5. I like them. They're tiny. They have lots of flow. They're quiet. It's kind of my go-to. Uh, offer up. Didn't people use that for corals? What? 
No idea what the question is. Can you talk about what all you got from the Moonshiners method? Everything you got from Andre, how much was the cost? Thanks, bro. Where's the baby? The baby is napping in the bassinet in the other room. Super cute, by the way. A little reefer in the making. Uh, so... I do have other bottles, but these are the daily ones. So on my water box tank, I am dosing kind of my, my bulk trace elements via the Brightwell ones. So I have the... Whatever the trace one is called. Completely mind blanking at the moment. But they have their broad spectrum trace elements. So I have that on a doser. So that does the bulk of it. And then I'm using the Moonshiners to tweak it on top of that. And for these ones, I have Chromium. Rubidium, cobalt, manganese, got the liquid mud, we got iron, and vanidium. So these are the ones I dose, should be daily. It's probably more realistically with just having a baby. It happens every other day probably. But I try and dose those ones daily when I remember it. And those are like the daily kind of additions on top of it. And it's been working well. Um, I would say stuff just looks happier a little bit more vibrant when you get all your trace elements dialed in it's not required if you do lots of water changes you know you, that might be enough to do it for you i do not do a ton of water changes so tweaking the elements on top of it are a good way to do it now it also comes with the fact that you need to do icp tests once in a while to see where you're at and tweak your dosing based off that so food for thought uh whew, refidex addicts i had on that note, I actually will have Andre on sometime in the near future, and we'll dig into this more with him. I think that'd be a good one. Um, I had a yellow tang eat Ghanis. That would suck. My poor Ghanis. It's not too bad, but a little bit. The diamond goby was trying to build a tunnel underneath me. He kept burying them in sand. So I took little chunks of rock rubble, raised up my Ghanis. Now, he still tries to bury the edge, but they're like 95% out now. Um... Charles, why doesn't BRS or some big company get into the lumen extruded home tea slot aquarium stands? Hey, Than from Tidal Gardens bought a bunch, and I don't know if they're actually made for aquariums specifically, or he just went to an extruded aluminum kind of metal company and got them made. But like my light bar, actually not this one, my prior one, and one of my other tank is extruded aluminum, and I just bought 8020 and just made my own. You could really just design your own, do the same thing for custom sizes. Um, are you aware of any negative side effects of micro scrubbing? I do it six hours every night. I am no negative effects that I know of. I used to do it all the time. I haven't done it in a while, but I did it for years. Zero really issues with that. Brian's Aquarium. Best way to get rid of Aptasia. Um, Bergen Nudie Branks. Uh, peppermint shrimp. Or kelp paste. Or another cheap way. Take super glue, glue over top of it. Make a little super glue tomb, then it can't spread and it dies off. Um, big thing is you don't want it to be able to spread. So if you're going to hit it, you got to hit it hard and make sure you completely engulf it in super glue or calc or f or whatever you want to use. Uh, Michael, recently my green plating Monty had been losing its color. Nutrient deficiency could contribute to this. Usually it's calcium. Plates love calcium. And if you're super low in calcium, that could be affecting it. Again, you could be bleaching if you're giving it too much light. But uh, Refedix Dev convinced my fiance to start her own softy nano. Nice. Um, have any interest in leather or softies you like that aren't so common? For softies, what do I like that softies? Green Nephia. You can't see it, but it's in the back corner of my tank. But that one is super bright. It's a cool one. Um, also the good softies. I like Gargonians. Tons of cool Gargonians. I would look at those. Um, I don't know. I've kind of neon green mushroom corals. I don't know if you can see it. Probably not, but that's a really cool one. That's all leather. Mushrooms are really cool. Um, you can kind of sort of see right there. They are super bright orangey yellow mushrooms, super duper cool. Um, like a Recordia's, like a lot of those stuff. I get really cool mushrooms on the sound bed. I'll do stuff like that. Uh, rock flowers, perfect. Rock flower tank would be amazing for a little nano. Ellen Brown, reefing on a budget. Didn't know you were a dad reef to use. Congrats, thank you. I am as of 10, no, nine days ago. So, got my own little frag. 
Uh, Charles Wade, Clarice or Reef Roller Mat? I have a Clarice on both tanks. I have not seen the Red Sea one in person. It looks like it has some cool features, but I already have Clarice on both tanks and I've been happy with those ones. So can't fully comment on the Red Sea one yet, but it looks kind of cool. Uh, T40 Reefer, about to get a 90 gallon, but in the meantime, what do you think I could use the AI Prime Right and two Reef Brights? I think I can use an AI Prime and two Reef Brights? You could. I would want a second AI Prime. I'd say if you had two Primes and two Reef Brights, I'd say that would work. But one AI Prime's kind of pushing it because that's more of about an 18 to 20 inch area, right? So I would definitely want to do an extra one on that one. Uh, Chris C, Monty Color Check Magnesium. If your magnesium is low, it is going to mess with everything. So magnesium's like the referee, the reef keeper helps kind of keep the balance. So definitely that is a good point and a good one to check. Aquarium cabinets, I do aluminum stands. There you go. Talk to Nick if you're in the UK. He might be able to hook you up with an aluminum stand. If you, it's not the cheapest stuff, but it's like big kid Lego. Like the extrude aluminum, super cool. They use it for 3D printers. I use it for my DIY light bars. You can use it for all kinds of stands and enclosures. Super cool stuff. Um, best way to get rid of bubble algae. We did talk about that one at the beginning, Peter. So scroll back a little bit if you want to check that one out. Um, thanks, guys. Been eyeing one of the snow, snowflake leathers. I have no idea what the snowflake leather is. I have to look this one up quickly. Aaron, <laughs> a few diapers for the mini dude. Thank you, sir. I just bought a box before the stream. <laughs> Much appreciated. Uh, not gonna lie, it amazes me how many they go through. Like, you have no idea. You're like changing one and freaking midway through, it's like, there goes another diaper. It's like, oh. so definitely a lot. So appreciated, thank you. Um, She'll be a great father. Thank you, dedicated reefer. Any secrets on keeping gonies going? Can't keep them ali alive for the life of me. I do nothing special for my gonies. That being said, I do have all my trace elements that I keep pretty close to in line, which probably helps some. Um, and I also broadcast feed my tank daily. So gonies in general like to be fed. They like to catch little bits of food. And so when I broadcast feed the tank, um, I do have a bit of a mix. Usually it's mice. This is the base and usually I'll mix in like canalists or some other like oyster feast or some other random little food every couple of days and I'll broadcast feed. So when I do that, I turn my return pump off for 45 minutes. So it's just the power heads on and that keeps all the food suspended and floating through the tank. And I feel that gives the corals time to catch those little tiny particles that the fish don't grab. And I think that feeds the gonies and other stuff as well. Now, I also have gonies in this tank, which are doing very happy, and I do nothing special for them either. But again, I think broadcast feeding the tank is also feeding the corals, what helps out quite a bit. Blastos are making their way back to LPS off D trends. Blastos are super cool. I don't think I have a Blasto anymore. I used to have a really cool one. I think it disappeared at some point. Uh, Alan Den's going to be a great father. Really happy for him. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Rain. Dedicated Reefer, thank you guys for the super chat. It's much appreciated. Um, Gary, starting my first 20 gallon water box tank is cycled. I have one fish, five snails inside. I noticed some of the hair on the pumps and the sand looks like little strings. Tanks maturing. It depends if it is green, it's probably algae, which means I would turn your lights down a little bit until your tank's a bit more established. Um, <laughs> Aaron, thanks for answering all my stupid DMs. No problem. Um, so if I have a bunch of algae in this tank too, which pains me, but it's been very neglected lately. I have cyanol and some algae growing, which I need to get back to and deal with and make it all pretty again. Um, but new tank will definitely have issues if you had your lights on while you're cycling it. It's probably going to be something like hair algae, in which case I'd manually remove what you can with like a water change hose and then dose a little hydrogen peroxide to the roots and the base of it and it'll kind of kill it off. Now, whenever I do this, like one mil ten per 10 one mil per 10 gallons is kind of like what I consider the safe amount. So if your tank's 100 gallons, 10 mils a day roughly should be fine. And just use it in a syringe, turn off your flow, and just spot treat wherever those little root bases are. Uh, do, 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 do. Um, Mike the newbie, would you trust Apex Salinity Probe, Hannah Checker, or Tropicana Marine Hydrometer? They all give me different readings. I would trust the hydrometer the most 
um, because it's kind of like a scientific tool. It's pre-calibrated. Neptune Salinity Probe, if it gets air bubbles on it, it gives you flaky readings. The Hannah Checker, I would actually test for the most part. Some people have said that some dosing, dosing methods can mess with it a bit. So that might give you a slight off reading. I found the Hannah to be pretty accurate, but to be honest, I would you probably use the hydrometer as the standard. Just make sure your flow's off and you can see where it kind of settles out. <laughs> Alan Brown, have some baby white monies to go to diapers. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> Much appreciated. Um, Ron, what sumps are you running with the roller mats? How did you modify them to fit them? This sump is a custom sump I had made. It's very simple. It's a big open box with three chambers in it. So it's really easy to add. Um, my original water box sump, I broke out, cut out the chamber where the socks was, and I put the roller there. And then I eventually got a custom Geo's Reef sump, which now has a built-in roller mat. Um, but I've mainly, for the most part, always had just custom sumps because it's not that expensive to get a glass sump made. Um, for the price you pay for them, and then it made it really easy because I just leave a nice open spot for it. Uh, so, oh, and another one I did in the past was an eShop sump. And same thing, I cut the socks out. I use a reciprocating tool and I use that blade, and we cut out a big area where the socks were, and I literally just made it fit. So if it's acrylic, you can cut it and modify it. If it's glass, a bit trickier, but you can cut the sock area with, with a razor blade and just make sure you get one that fits in there nicely. Um, hello, I'm running to issues using kelk through my reactor, currently getting my pH up to 8.3, but my calcium is through the roof around 570 to 600, alka stable at 9, any advice? Well, if that's the only way you're supplementing, there's not much you can do to lower calcium other than do a water change or dose less. Um, I've personally never had an issue with high calcium. I know some people say not to get it too high around 550, 600. I personally haven't seen an issue, but yeah, the only way you're going to lower it down is dose less or do a big water change to drop it down with a salt that has less calcium in it. Uh, Nick, two little fishies, Gani power, great for Ghanis. I've heard good things, haven't tried it. I'll trust you on that one, Nick. Um, Aaron, I have a Red Sea mat on a Red Sea tank. Had to cut out a bunch of baffles. Yeah, so you're likely going to have to modify your sump to make it fit. Personally, I wouldn't go back now. Um, I don't think I do socks again. It's just so nice not changing them on a weekly basis. You know, every like six to eight weeks I change a roll, done. So that, not having to like wash your socks in the washing machine, like those are all nice big benefits to me. I would rather not have any socks or filter roller rather than use socks again. I'd just use my Chato to catch all the stuff. Some would be more nasty, but take away all that extra work. Um, do, 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 do. All right. Anyone have bubble algae without beaten bubble algae without dosing vibrant? Get something to eat it. Get, um, emerald crab or a fox face. Just get something that's going to eat it for you and manually remove it. Let them clean off the rest of it. The only problem is, is you're going to probably have it like in your overflow in places that the creatures can't get to, in which case they'll likely come back. So you're kind of in the management stage. Um, going from an overflow return chamber in an AIO. I have a foam screen in the first chamber. My skimmer on top of that in the middle chamber has carbon heater, last return pump. How would I change it? Cole, are you trying to put a filter roller in there? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do, Cole? Confused on your question. Uh, Bert236 had great success with emerald crabs. Haven't manually removed since adding them three to my display. One in coral. One in the coral quarantine, he eats them up in there. So I would take a look at your rock structures and get an emerald crab for each rock structure because generally they'll stick to one little rock pile and then each one can have its little zone it will munch away at your bubble algae on. Um, socks are so 2021. They are. It's, it's more the maintenance on it. I find most people don't change them enough to get the benefit out of it. So yes, it will help remove stuff from your water, but it's, if you're using it just for water clarity, then even if you ignore them, they still do a chunk of the job. But if you're using them for nutrients as well, then I find most people just don't change them enough to fully accomplish that. And it's just that taking them outside, hosing them down, washing them with bleach. Like it's just so much more effort to do them. Um, 
tempted by the Ill Illumagic Blaze, or are you raiding for life? You know what? The Illumagic Blaze is actually a very nice light. Honestly, I, I'm probably Radeons because I love them. Um, I just like their form factor and how much spread they put out. But I would absolutely use a Blaze as well. Um, super nice lights. I would say the app programming could use a little bit of love, but the lights themselves are sweet lights. Um, the one thing I would do, I would change the fan to be quieter though. Like I'd probably put it in an aftermarket, knock to a fan or something on it to make it quieter. But aside from that, I think they're pretty nice lights. Um, calcium was a bit high as well, but after running the higher pH, 8.2, 8.5, slightly higher temps, ADF, my calcium went from 550 now 420, 450. Huh, I wonder how the higher temps. I guess you're speeding up the metabolism of the coral. Love my bubble magnus filter roller gen 2. I have not used that one, Don. One question that I've been asked a bazillion times because I've done a bunch of calc videos lately. If someone wants to introduce calc to your tank and you're already dosing with other supplements, um, how, how do you figure out that balance? So basically just start low and as you increase how much calc you're dosing, you're going to have to drop your elk and your calcium dosing a bit as well so to kind of balance things out um that would be you're gonna have to test um there's no magic number but basically add more calc if your numbers are rising too much then just drop down your alkaline in your calcium dosing um mighty reefer what got you into reefing that is a good question before i was into reefing i was hardcore into planted tank so i had a lot of those cool like i cool little what are they called neo cardinals and the cardinia like the little tiny little fancy shrimp i had a ton of those and i was big into like planted tanks and this is before i got into reef tv i even like built my own doser back in the day with like arduino and dosing pumps before i even knew dosers were a thing or maybe they were even a thing then this is probably 10 plus years ago so i was making my own dosers and i had my own little things like automate my freshwater tank for all the plants because i didn't want to manually dose all the nutrients every day so i ordered all automate all that and then I had tons of different plants. I probably had like seven little planted tanks at one point and saltwater's always kind of interested me and I was just like ah how hard can it be so I took down one of the planted tanks and converted it to saltwater and my first one was a 12 gallon fluval edge so super cool tank it was in the corner of my bedroom and modified it put like a little reef light on top and yeah, that was my first reef tank and it quickly became addicted to it. And yeah, this ran out of space in the tank for corals and stuff. So of course, upgrade to a bigger tank, then a bigger tank and a bigger tank. And then during that process, I lost some interest in the the planted tanks. They, they got more ignored as I started going to the reef tanks. So eventually I just converted 100% reef tanks. Um, I still appreciate a nice planted tank, but I definitely love reef tanks more. And then more, more recently, I've gotten to vivariums as well. So I got my dart poison dart frog one on the other side of my desk and that's kind of the plants and all the nature vibe i do enjoy that as well so i got that one on one side and the reef tank over here and kind of best of both worlds uh cool 30 gallon aio what would you put in the rear chamber i would put in a heater <laughs> probably something for dosing um an overflow tower which would likely have some filter floss in it and probably a bag of chemi pure blue it's likely what I'd throw in mine. Um, Aaron, thinking of the vast calc stir, but have no room in the stand. I know they are gravity drip. Would it be a problem having the reactor a few feet away? It would not, as long as your output can be at an angle and go all the way down to your sump. Now, the motor sits on the lid of it, so you could actually sit it inside your sump if you have room in your sump. I don't see why you couldn't do that. Uh, what's going on, Shreemy's Reef? Uh, reefing's my therapy. Hopefully this time you see my question. All right, I do see it. Um, I set up my refugium 10 days ago using an AI fuge light. I notice a brownish thin layer starts to build up on the glass. Is that normal? Where you have light, you shall have algae. So it is probably some form of algae just building up on the glass. Like your tank, you got to clean the sides of your glass every few days. You know, you might have to clean your refugium as well. Now, because you're using an AI prime, I also made a product a while ago and they're little flaps that you can plug into the bottom of it like little like camera light shades and you can and i basically did that for this very reason so you can tone the light in a little bit and make it so it's not hitting your skimmer and the sides of your sump so you have to clean it as often um vivid aquarium aquatic sells them because i didn't want to be printing 24 7. so he sells them they're super cheap they're like not very expensive but it's a really easy way to get rid of all the light spill on your skimmer and your sump so check them out 
Time for some shut eye. I know it's late on your side of the pond, but thank you, Nick. Good seeing you, buddy. How did I get sponsored by BRS? Ryan approached me one day and we had a nice chat, and here we are. So it's good. They liked what I did. They liked that I have like just straight up legit content. I don't really push things, I don't really sell things. I just, I'm here to help people, and that vibed with them. So yeah, started talking, and yeah, so now I work with them, which is awesome. People say Millies are one of the easiest corals acros to keep, but I've never had luck with them. Other SPS are doing well in my tank. Some coral, some type of corals just don't like certain tanks. It is highly possible that whatever, there's something in your tank that just doesn't jive well with Millies. Um, I personally love Millies. They're one of my favorite types of acros. Uh, yeah, it's honestly hard to say. There was Red Dragon, not Red Dragon, uh, Red Planet is one Millie. I just would never survive for me. I literally tried it four or five times. It would always bite the dust. I had some that almost lost and starting to grow back in my water box. So it's like, there's finally hope, but this is like years of me trying to get a Red Planet to survive. So there's just like certain tanks have nemesis corals. <laughs> it's, who knows what the gremlin is, but it's highly possible. Uh, T40 Reefer, thank you for the super chat. How about I get a 90 gallon, but for the meantime, do you think I can use four AI prime lights and two reef prites for SPS? Yes, I do. Um, depends on the depth of your tank. I consider an AI prime like perfect for roughly an 18 gallon cube. And you know, 18, so three of them, four of them would be perfect for a 90, which is generally a four foot tank. So yeah, I think you're set with that. You'd be good to go. Yeah, four AI primes, hundred percent. Um, do you plan on adding more ex exotic fish or inverts to your tank? I don't know. It's hard to say. I haven't added too many fish in a while. I've added small fish to this one. Like I've added do 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 some Poseidon chromies, which is I got a tail swap lenny, uh, purple dotty back, a neon dotty back. Uh, white tail bristle tooth tang. Those are the newer guys that I've added to here. I don't know if I see something like super cool that's not crazy expensive. Highly possible I will. Uh, what brand of dosing pump for two part do you recommend? Nano twenty gallon reef. Thank you. Congratulations, to you and your wife. Thank you, JLS. Uh, really depends on your budget. Uh, Kamor are pretty good quality for the price of them. Um, I am also a big fan of Versas, which you can start to get again. Not the cheapest, but very versatile. You can I use them for water changes. I use them to feed calc reactors, calcium reactors, all kinds of stuff, and dose and trace outlets. So love those pumps. Um, do 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 do. So if you have an Apex, I mean, obviously the dose is a good pair for it. But in general, I'm going to say the Versas are kind of my favorite pump. If you want a cheaper alternative, I would say the Camars. Uh, there's tons of other good options out there as well, but those are kind of like the main ones that I've been happier with out of the bunch. Searching for an inverter generator right now. Speaking of generators, I know usually late summer, fall down on the East Coast, that's more hurricane season. If you guys have natural gas in your house, this is on my to-do list, but every once in a while, Costco has this Furman generator that's tri-fuel, which means you can run it off gas, propane, or natural gas. So eventually I'm gonna buy one. I just want to be be there and on sale. It only shows up every few months, but one day when it's actually on sale, I wanna get it for like the backups for the tank. Cause barbecue, natural gas, plug it in, unlimited fuel, never have to worry about running out. So super cool idea. Um, Zobian, can you explain how to download your light schedule on Mobius? So I did a video on my Mobius schedule. If you are on a computer, on a device, in the description for that video, there is a link to my website and there's a thing there. Now, if you click on the link normally, it might open it like a text file in the browser and you see all the code. On a computer, you right click and save as it. Or if you're on your phone, you might be able to long click it or two finger cold, it depends on your phone. But basically you want to save as that link and it will save that file. Um, what I've done is I put it into Dropbox. So, and I have Dropbox on my phone. That's how I got onto my phone. And then from there I can import it into Movius. I did do a video that walks you through that. So check that out, definitely. And if you just Google Reef Dude's Mobius schedule, it should pop up. So check that one out and go through it. But yeah, the biggest thing is you just need to 
right click and save as that link so it doesn't open your browser uh, out of the blue suddenly I have to clean my glass every time I used to clean it three to four days I can even clean it twice a day nothing's changed parameters are stable I dose via tried it on it could be more light it could be you got more nutrients in your tank it could be a light spill it could be some kind of seasonal thing with ambient light in the room honestly it's hard to say but generally it's probably a little bit elevated nutrients in your tank Tony, which salt do you use and why? I use Brightwell Neil Marine. Why? Because one, half they sponsor my channel. Other half, because it mixes up super clean in my bins. Um, prior to that, I used to use good old reef crystals for years and years because they were local and cheap. However, they tend to be a dirty salt. It like mix up and have a bunch of crud in my tank. And with this one mixing up nice and clean, I don't have to clean my mixing bins as often and it's just, I prefer not to have all the gunk in my tank if you got the option. But prior to that, I used to just use whatever is cheap and on sale. <laughs> uh, we have the Costco generator. Nice. Um, it's a good one. Yeah, they have some other one all the time. I don't remember Champion or something, but that one's, I think, just gas. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm holding out for that one to be on sale one day that it can take natural gas as well. 5,500 watts, okay. Hey, that's enough. Yeah, 5,500 watts, natural gas. That's going to run your tanks and definitely save you. So one one day. Um, thanks, Dev. I actually ordered two pairs of visors. Nice. Should be delivered tomorrow. Great idea. Thank you very much. Um, let me know how you like them. The new the newer kit should come with the different pegs that fit both the older style Prime Fuge and the newer one. Because I know at one point they changed the screw hole size where the little pegs click into. Uh with Randy Gum from BRS, could you see yourself in a role of sidekick with Ryan? I could. You know, it probably would be fun. The only problem is I'd have to move. And after buying a house a couple years ago, I don't really want to move right now. I'm all settled in, still customizing it. Uh, but yeah, it could be fun. Do Leapmont, do you think a DeJourney Silphin would be too big for a six foot tank? I have one in my six foot tank. Um, he's definitely the biggest fish in my tank. I don't. I wouldn't say he's too big, but. I mean, if he kept growing, again, he's also like 11, 12 years old. So he, he's pretty old on there. I'd say you're fine for quite a while. Um, do do. What's a good GFO media? I have used just the standard issue bulk GFO from Bulk Reef Supply and from Reef Supplies, which is a Canadian store. And I've also used Royal Foss, and that's the one I'm currently using. Um, they all work fairly well. It's hard to say if one works better than the other. But yeah, Rural Frost is the current one I'm using. Uh, do I speak French? I do not. In high school, they made you take it for a year. That's the extent of my French. I've been learning Spanish on Duolingo, though. <laughs> uh, my wife is fluent in English and Spanish, so I've been trying to, like, step up my Spanish a bit. So, so sl slowly learning. Eh, slowly learning. Um, any news on the LG Scrubber with dual blades? Terrence spoke about on his channel. That is from Flipper, and they have it direct on their website. I have not seen it on like BRS or any retailer's website yet, though. I think it's only direct from them. Abraham, how many tanks do you have in your six foot tank? I think I have six. I have three yellows, a purple, a hippo, and a sailfin. Yeah, I got six tanks in there, or six tanks, which is probably a lot. Um, I do have a little bit of a nutrient battle, and it's probably because of all my big tanks. What do you think is the biggest problem with a big reef tank? Looking at the water box 220.6. I wouldn't say there's any problem. I mean, depending where you're putting it, make sure your floor can support it. I would say just not a problem, but you got to be prepared to spend more money on gear. You know, you're going to need more power heads. You know, you're, you're going to need bigger heaters to run the tank. So there's not really a problem, but it is more expensive to run a bigger tank because of the extra equipment and the extra power consumption. Like I know on the Apex, my big tank's about 40 bucks a month in power. So, you know, a little nano tank might be five bucks in power. So whether that extra 35 bucks is a big deal, it all depends on everyone's personal situation and whatnot. Uh, Mike the newbie, do you think new marine has too high magnesium? Mine test too high, and I see snails upside down without moving frequently. I believe it's high mag could be the cause. How high is it? I'm curious what yours tested at. Um, I haven't tested in there in a while, so good question. My tank isn't too high, but I also don't do massive water changes. Like once in a while I will, but for the most part they get little water changes. 
but if your magnesium is 1600 plus, it is possible that your inverts will be very lethargic. Uh, <laughs> I have nine tangs, my six foot kind of want more. That's a good chunk. So you gotta, if they're babies, little tangs, you're fine. But you know, 10 years later, they might be a little cramped in there. Might be a good excuse for a tank upgrade down the road. Your thoughts on Terrence getting shut down for the time being? I don't know the story there, to be honest. I know him and Mark started their own thing. And then, yeah, I haven't really seen content, so I don't know the story there. I don't think anyone can shut down someone's independent channel, so I'm sure it was a personal choice or something going on, so don't know. Can we get a glimpse of the tank? This tank is not as pretty at the moment because it is a cyano. It's Malgy. It needs love. With a new baby, I've been busy. It's been a bit neglected. So one of these days, maybe this week, I'll give it a bit of love and suck out all the nasty and get her spiffed up a little bit more. Um, can you see the tank? I will do... Let's, maybe I'll film a tank on the water. A water box update video. I don't think I've done one in a little while. I'll try and do one every, like, four or five weeks. Any issues with the trigger fish? Think about one for my six foot and don't want to eat other small fish. I have never had a problem with my trigger eating any fish. It is plausible that they might munch on certain corals. I haven't specifically had an issue. The only one questionable thing is I had a really big cool clam and somebody ate it. I don't know who, don't know if it's a trigger, don't know if it's someone else. So I came out one morning and part of his guts were out and all the fish were picking at it. So I don't know who the culprit was, but that's the only coral I would say that I've lost to the fish eating it. Um, aside from that, there are some of the wrasses that will flip over coral, which is slightly annoying. There's the Melanaris in here, and I often find little chunks of stuff on the sand bed upside down as he's pod hunting. Dun, dun, dun. Cease and desist shut them down. Oh, crazy. From who? From who, Manny? I'm curious. I have no idea. I'm out of the loop on this one. How do you get rid of cyano without using ChemiClean? There is, supposedly it is part of kind of a bacterial imbalance. So it could be from bacteria. Some say it could be nitrate and phosphate imbalance. I know my PL4 was pretty low on this tank. May or may not be why. ChemiClean is your quick fix. However, there is stuff, which I have actually, I should start dosing it, from whoever makes the blue bottles, Triton, I think. Yeah. Um, do do do. Nice thread up nice setup for streaming inspiration to me just starting. Awesome. Much appreciated and definitely do it. It's fun. Do you quarantine new fish? I did not for many years. One day it caught up to me and became a very bad issue. Um this sucked. This was about a year and a half ago when I was moving and changing tanks. Um, someone was importing some fish and they had this really cool golden angel on there. It was kind of rare. It was really cool looking. So I got it. Of course it had something and it wiped out all the fish that was in my temporary tank for moving, which sucked. It was sad because I lost a few fish I had for years. And after that, I actually started quarantining. And then for the next couple of years, I basically quarantined any new fish that I got. Now I haven't quarantined in a while, but I also haven't really added new fish in a while. Um, I did add a couple of little guys to this one. And when I did that, uh, I do have a buddy that owns an LFS, so sometimes I'll, I'll let him pre-quarantine stuff. But it is definitely a good idea to quarantine because there's always a risk if you don't, especially for your established fish. Uh, do you name your fish? Most of my fish have names, not all, but most do. My wife picked most of the fish names. I, I did some, but yeah, there's a good chunk. Mm. And something other random and fun, in the back corner, which unfortunately you can't see right now, it has um, doo -doo -doo -doo. my two clownfish actually laid eggs. So there is little tiny clownfish in there. Or not clownfish, but those little eggs. I haven't decided if I'm going to try and like separate them and raise them yet. I would have to get some rotifers and whatnot going in order to make that successful. Um, if you are going to try raise them, rotifers and phytoplankton are definitely important. But you can see all... Uh, is it going to focus? I don't think that'll focus on. But you can see all the little tiny guys in there. So tons of little eggs. Super cool. One of these days I do want to kind of try and raise them because it'd be fun. Congrats on the baby. Thank you, Diamond Reef. Thanks, James. Congrats on the new edition. Have you tried Joe's Juice? Um, I have not. 
my best tool for Aptasia, I'm going to say, has been F Aptasia because it kind of coats them and creates a little tune for them. If you don't have that, just use super glue gel, but fully coat it and make sure you lock it in there. Like the little tuning part so it can't spread is a key part of actually getting rid of them and not just annoying them and making it spread more. Um, Mike, around 1470 mag marine. To me, 1440 isn't too high. Like 1250 to 1450 is like a nice range for your magnesium. Or 1350 to 1450 is kind of what I go for in general. So I don't think that's too high and that shouldn't affect your snails. If you're like 16, 1700, that point is going to start to have an effect on inverts. Uploads by Tom. How do you mix your, how long do you mix your salt? It gets mixed ongoing for a long time. I have a 40 gallon bin and when it's low, I refill it directly from the RODI and I have a power head in there that's always running. I put the power head to 100% and I just dump in salt. And if I need it right away, I'll give it a few hours, ideally overnight. But for the most part, I mean, it's always mixing right now. So if it's the fresh thing, you know, maybe it's mixed overnight. If it's something I'm going to pull from salt right now, it's been in there for weeks. So it's like super mixed. Uh, do, do, do. Also, would you do a live stream with Reef Dork? I think it would be an interesting one. Yeah, I'd do one with them, sure. Do you feed live Fido to your tank on a regular basis? Um, I used to, and now I randomly do. Um, I used to culture it and feed it all the time. I haven't cultured it in a while. And currently, I do have just the reef nutrition stuff, so it's not live live. It's kind of dormant, or but it's still viable in a sense. So, And I do randomly feed that to the tank. No regular schedule. It's I'm going to say probably like once a week, maybe I'll randomly grab some of the reef nutrition stuff and feed it as kind of a treat for some of the extra stuff to the tank. Awesome news on the father mini dude and grandfather clowns. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Yeah, it's fun. I don't know. So have you, haven't you guys ever tried raising clownfish? I've never done it, but I'm tempted and we'll see. Now they're on the back glass, so there's no easy way to remove them. Like maybe I'll add a rock or the little clay pot or something and see if they lay in it for future. But yeah, it's been a while since I've done rotifers and all that stuff. So I definitely want to get that started again. I am half curious to see if any would survive in the tank. I'm assuming they would become snacks though, but could be a, could be a fun future project. Um, so yeah, live Fido, it depends on the corals you keep. I do feel live Fido plankton is beneficial. Like if you have clams, you're going to appreciate it, especially smaller clams. Any filter feeding creatures are going to love it. You know, a lot of Gargonians are going to love it. So there's lots of corals that will benefit from it for sure. Uh, Rotifers just for a few days and Arthemia is good enough. Congrats. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So baby brine shimp, super easy. You can do those pretty quick. It's rotifers are the tricky one because you need to source them and keep that culture going. We need to live with you in an inappropriate reefer again. I will bug Moki one day and see if he's up for it. It's been a while since I've had him on, so yeah. I will, I will reach out to them. We'll get something going in the near future. I actually might, next week, I potentially have a coral like importer guy coming on. So I think he might be cool and kind of talk about the whole process of where the corals come from and how going through it. So I think that'll be a cool stream. I think that one's going to be next next week. Um, do you worry about TDS creep in your ATO fill-up station? Worst case, you might just get more DI, 100%. So I don't really worry about it. On my big tank on the water box, I have that 40-gallon-ish bin. And there's a sensor in the bottom and sensor on top. So when it hits the bottom, it kicks on the RDI and it refills it. And that, doesn't, and that lasts quite a while. The one on this one is... Doo -doo -doo -doo. I don't even remember if it's a five or ten gallon ATO tank, whatever it is. And uh, it's probably ten. And that that one fills up every three days. So there still would be more TDO creep, but the whole point of the bin in the middle was to reduce the t TDS creep. Um, now, but yeah, worst case scenario, you just burn through a bit more DI. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can put an auto flush on it and pre flush it, which is going to help further reduce that. Um, I do have the auto flush on the one for the water box, but I don't on this tank, mainly because I don't have the booster pump and the rest of it on it, but something I might add down the road. So yeah, little little extra DI, so it's not not the end of the world. Um, da, 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 da. All right, guys, what, I, what else you guys got for reef questions? Fire them at me. So my other slight random project has been playing with different mods to the Kelkster, trying to get it more potent. 
not quite like dosing a slurry, but something kind of in the middle is kind of what I'm playing with. And yeah, I keep just prototyping different kind of blades and props and different scoops to try and like mix it up further. So I'm working on it. Um, do you watch other reefers YouTube channels see how their tanks are doing? I do randomly. I used to a lot more, but due to a lack of time in life lately, <laughs> it hasn't been happening nearly as much. So, but ran randomly I do, just for fun. It's always good to see other people's tanks. I like I like tank tour videos too. I like to see how someone sets up a tank. How do they, you know, what do they do for filtration? What is how do they maintain it? Like, I like seeing the whole kind of process of different approach of different people. And even like sometimes I find people with really cool setups, and I'll try and get them on the stream because it's fun to talk about it and just learn different methods and different perspectives. Too cheap to buy a booster and auto flush. Yeah, exactly. Um, why are you using the Kelkster versus the ice cap? I had the largest ice cap and it was too big to fit in my stand with my calcium reactor where the a vast marine one is skinnier and taller. So it was just more space efficient. This basically the footprint was the main reason I changed it just for the space I had to work with. Uh, would you ever do a DIY alkalinity tester using Arduino, Raspberry, etc.? <sighs> if you have a lot of free time, I would say maybe, but honestly, the amount of time and effort you spend into it is probably just worth buying one. You know, if you need to buy, like, you know, the Atlas stamp for pH to hook it up, there's 180 bucks plus a probe. You know, there's you're already up to 200 bucks. You know, Raspberry Pi, there's another 80 bucks. You're already into this for like 300 and something dollars. Before even figuring out any of the code for it, you need another dosing pump. There's another 15, 20 bucks. So like you're still into it for, you know, four or $500 to build your own plus countless hours of time. So you, you know, you gotta say, what is your time worth? Would it be a cool project? For sure. But, you know, spending weeks of your life on coding and figuring it all out versus spending an extra couple hundred bucks over top of what you spent on parts to buy it. That's where you gotta kind of weigh, weigh your options on it. But back in the day, I built my own controller using a Raspberry Pi or Arduino. I can't remember which one I used at the time, but I had one. I took an old DJ Power Bar, took it apart. I put, I don't remember if it's an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi because I've done so many projects with both. But either way, I had it inside of the power strip. I had a temperature sensor. I had an auto feeder connected to it. All the outlets were either timed or based off like a sensor. And... Yeah, so super cool project. But then, again, my point with like the the stamps to connect all the probes from Atlas Scientific to add pH, ORP, ORP, and I don't know if Slendy whatever else it was. It was like five hundred bucks for all the probes and stamps alone. And at that point, like I was like, I can buy a used Apex for cheaper, and I can buy just the the circuitry and the new probes to build my own. So that's why I ended up just going the controller route way back when. Um, iodine dosing. Yes, I dose four to six drops of iodine a day or every couple days to this tank. Um, this one seems to be low. My other tank seems to be fine for iodine. I'm going to assume that's probably from the Brightwell trace additives that I'm adding to it on the water box, but this one doesn't have all those trace on it and it always seems to be lower on iodine. So this one does get iodine every couple days. I would say daily, but it's more like when I remember to do it. Uh, it looks like my cardinals are carrying baby in its mouth. Super cool. Uh, if you ever try to raise the fish, I wonder you're doing good videos on raising saltwater fish. So the cardinals, super cool. It's really cool to see how they mouth brood. If it's the first time doing it, there's a good chance they could swallow the fish or spit them out the babies. If they've had a couple chances at it, then you might actually get some out of it. Um, one tip I would give you is make a fake urchin for the tank and put it somewhere where they hang out. So what they do when the babies come out they generally hide in spines of urchins in the wild so if you take some reef putty take a bunch of zap straps or zip ties and put it in there make it just a little ball on the bottom and basically make a little thing that's going to be a little safe haven for all the babies to hide in so i would make that and put it somewhere where your cardinals hang out it's super cool if they do um any tips on growing zoas my paleothos are out of control zoas don't grow so Again, iodine, since we just talked about that one. They do appreciate iodine. Um, aside from that, I don't do anything special for Zoas. Um, this tank I dose iodine, the other one I don't, but for the most part, they just seem happy and growing. Nothing special. 
that I would say. I have had the odd one, like, of course, like an expensive one or two where they've like melted on you. But for the most part, yeah, I don't do anything special. Uh, the Native Reefer, I dose Kelk hourly with a doser from a container of Kelk solution. And I read my tank's evaporation and brought my pH from 7.5 to 7.81. Will a Kelkster add up the pH further? Okay, it will not update it further. If you're dosing fully saturated Kelk, a calc stir is doing the same thing for you, but it's like the lazier, more automated method. So currently you have to mix up your batch and then you dose it and you mix up a batch and you dose it. Where a calc stir is always mixing up that batch. So you're always mixing your fully saturated calc. So all I do is add like a little scoop to my reactor like once a week just to like top it off for what's used up. That's it. So I don't have to mix big batches, you know, maybe every like month or two I'll pull the reactor out and I'll rinse the whole thing out and start fresh just to clean it out. But it basically is just more of an easier, more automated way of dosing calc versus doing it by the batch method. It looks like I got a new 3D printer project. All right. I'm actually today, my printer's been a bit flaky lately, so I'm going to give it some love. I ordered a glass bed for it and I got this other like stickery texture material I'm going to try. And then, I don't know if this is going to make a difference, but all these little silicone bed spacers to replace the screws and stuff. So it's going to get a bit of a makeover later and hopefully get her dialed in again. And I've been looking at getting a bigger printer to some other cool projects that I want to try for like skimmer related things and stuff are too physically too big for my printer. So I'm debating possibly getting one with a bigger bed for doing more cool future projects. So we'll see. But 3D printers are definitely fun, um, especially if you're into reefing. So many useful little things you can make, even like tube guides or like holders for things. Like there's just so many little useful things that you can do with 3D printers. So I think they're super cool. Um, now with your doser, so with dosing the calc, uh, you can absolutely dose it hourly. If your pump can do continuous duty, I would try dosing it more frequently because it just keeps, it'll up your overall baseline rather than like a spike, then down, then a spike, then down, then a spike, then down. Um, uploads by Tom. Would love a Kelkster, but the cheapest option we have here is 450 bucks. A DIY one would be nice, but I can't find an appropriate container. DIY ones aren't very hard either. Like my original DIY one, I used a magnetic stir. Yeah, too much work to get to it. But basically, magnetic stir in just like a big chamber. You just need to push water in, suck water out. Like, super easy way to do it. Um, so you could absolutely make your own. Or just put a pump, a little paddle, something inside of a bucket. Like, it, it, it's a chamber that mixes and water goes in and out. So, I think you could absolutely make your own. Um, haven't had a set tank since 2006, but my IM 140 gallon. Best advice to start up a newbie again. Best advice for starting a tank. Uh, depends how hardcore you want to go. I am a fan of automation, so I like to automate everything. I mean, the basics, you know, I'd say you want a heater controller and an auto top off. Those would be the basics. Uh, aside from that, I mean, a stable reef tank is a happy reef tank. So test it once a week, you know, make sure things are on stale. And once you start adding coral, then, you know, make sure you keep your parameters stable and it's going to be happy. It's one of the biggest things, I'd say. Stability keeps a tank happy. Uh, I know over time, you definitely become more of a slacker on testing. At least I do. Now I have auto testers, which are a lifesaver because I can just look and be like, oh, it's tending up or down and then I can deal with it from there. Like, yeah. When last night, I accidentally dosed way too much elk. So again, quickly kick off a test, see how bad it is inside if I got to deal with it. I back the Bamboo X1 Carbon, can't wait. Ooh, is that the one that has like tons of fancy filament in it? Yeah, I think, I think so. I was actually looking at that one the other day. It looks super cool and it's actually a really good price. So sweet if that one does come out. Um, have you tried All For Reef? I have not, mainly because I have very big tanks now. Well, my, this tank's like 160 gallons-ish, my other tank's 200 gallons-ish, so it is more aimed at smaller tanks, so I haven't tried it, but I think it's a super cool product. And if I had a smaller tank, like say a 40 gallon runner, I'd probably use it because it's one solution. 
in my thought would be kind of cool. I know it has a bit of a delayed thing with the elk, but I always thought it'd be cool because the Elkatronic has a single dosing head to correct your elk. But if you hook that up to it, it'd be like all in one dosing testing, which would be super easy. Uh, Ron, thanks for ans your answers. Congrats on the baby. Thank you, Ron. Much appreciated. And you're welcome. Oh, now I'm curious about the bamboo printer. They look cool. Yeah, so if any of you guys are into 3D printing, you have a printer. I'm curious to know what you guys have. Because I am half torn on getting one of the bigger platform. Or just keep mine and make it work. We'll see. Um, on vacay in Hawaii. Very nice. Hopefully the tank is okay. I hope so too. <laughs> uh, Mike the newbie. Got a build for the K2 stir from a vast out of the DIY stir using a 12 volt PC fan powered by Apex 24 port. Variable step down. Nice. I'm eager to see your programming to control the calc stir. My calc stir is 24 seven. There is zero programming. It is on. It always stirs. It never turns off. It's fed with continuous duty dosing pump, which again is 24 seven. I literally look at my sump return chamber and look at the level in it. And if it's rising up a little bit or if it's dropping, then I'll just adjust how many bills per day are running through my calc stir. I think I'm at like 4,000 or 3,700 mils per day going through it. So there's like literally no programming on mine because it's always on. And now I'm curious to check what it's at. Yeah, so roughly six liters a day of water I'm pushing through my calc stir, And that is what my evaporation rate approximately is on the water box. Uh, Mike the Newbie, two Persias and an artillery for large prints. Are the Persia printers, or Persias, Persias, I'm probably saying it wrong, are they worth it? Mine was like a cheap China printer that was a couple hundred bucks, but then I probably spent a few hundred bucks on upgrades and like making it better. The Persia one's like a grand, and they, they're supposed to be like the sweet kind of Cadillac y version, so I'm curious. They have a new XL one coming out that looks absolutely amazing, but it's like two grand. Not cheap, but it looks amazing. Um, do you see any needs in the hobby that software could solve? Mm. Not overly. If there was, if you're a programmer, and the problem is this would take a lot of scientific y things, but I think what could be cool, if you had an app that could use image recognition to a identify a coral or an algae and give you recommendations based on it so you're like take a photo they're like oh this is this coral or oh this is this algae that here's how you'd fight it i think that would be a big one or now this would be much much harder but if you could somehow identify like issues with corals and then give recommendations on it based on but i think that would be a very long term kind of like machine learning thing where you'd have to take a lot of other people's photos and have it learn it and learn what the fixes were. So that'd be a big project. But I think that's that's one thing that I think software could be an awesome tool for. But again, very big in-depth project. Uh, the Bamboo printer uses AI and LiDAR to print insane speeds. That is super cool. All right, I'm going to look at that one again. Plus by Tom. I watched a video on the other day and that looked amazing. Uh, Sammy, NO4, 3 NO4, 0.1 NO3, getting cyano, slowly dying, low ACAN, SPS are thriving, hammers, etc. are thriving. Cannot keep nitrates higher, even with dosing. So, three nitrates. So, your, your nitrate should be more like 10, right? Not th Three is pretty low. So, I would either A, lower your PO4 by using like Rofos or GFO or something like that, or increase your nitrate. So another thought is if you have a ton of biomedia in your sump, that could be eating up all your nitrates. So you could remove some of your biomedia, which will help, again, take away some of that nitrate eating bacteria, which could help. Um, good evening. Hope you're doing well. Spent a week in Baren. Don't even know where that is. Ended up losing five frags of silo. That sucks. And a massive amount of algae everywhere. Ah, that does suck. Yeah, it sucks when you come back and have a bunch of issues in your tank. Honestly, this is one of those situations where I'd probably just give her a big water change, suck out any of the nasties, and just get things back to stable. Uh, uploads by Tom. Use the LD printer that's rebranded Wanhu, but unfortunately broken at the moment. Ah, curses. Use a flash forge with resin at work. Huh, I've never used a resin printer. They do look cool, though. 
Um, Steven, thankfully I removed them. Still need to grab one of my snails to remove them from the shells. Oh, lots of you guys have 3D printers. Love it. Those are the ones I use the most. Also have an Endler 3 enhanced auto bed leveling magnetic bed that's just gathering dust. Oh, lots of fun. So mine's a Tivo tarantula with the large build plate that I've added, like metal brackets everywhere and like for that and double bed rails and double Z rails. I've done a bunch of it and the, the, the little BL touch on it. So it's been pretty good. Like that's been my go by all well, my only 3D printer, but that's been pretty solid. But lately, it's been having some issues with like bed adhesion, different things. So that's kind of why I'm looking at fixing it up for now and possibly getting a bigger one. It's pretty old now, but it's been good. Uh, Sammy didn't think about that. The sump is remote and bigger than the display. I've been dosing new nitro with barely any results. Okay, I. So. I believe they have a more like a commercial grade neo nitro now, that's more concentrated. I saw a post from Brightwell on that like a week ago. So look into that because you could potentially use a stronger one. But yeah, second of all, if you have, you know, a ton of like bricks of media in your sump, remove some because each one of those bricks are taking down your nitrates. And that's like a really easy way to help boost it up a little bit. So that's probably what I'd look at. What's going on, Jones? You guys got me back on 3D printer hunting now. So it's fun. Waiting for the rest of my parts so I can hopefully fix mine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, if your sum's bigger than the display, I'm assuming you got some serious export going on for your display there. Uh, uploads by Tom. Steven, feel your pain. Didn't realize my CO2 tank ran out. That sucks. On the calcium reactor, so it dropped over a few weeks, then raised it too quickly, lost a few small colonies. I have done the same thing. Um, actually, with salinity, my salinity dropped way down, and I raised it too quick, and again lost a couple things so it is a big consideration usually when something's out of whack we always want to like fix it now we want that instant fix but your corals will appreciate it more if you take it slow and slowly ease things back to its happy place um even like a big result like mine i spike my elk up to 9.3 when it's usually you know around 8 to 8.5 and now again all i did is i just i have the calcium reactor the calc and i was also dosing on top of that as well so three different methods so I just turned off my elk dosing. I'm going to leave it off for a couple days until it just slowly drops back down. And again, just let things slowly go. If you do it too fast, you're just going to annoy something else. So always safer to just go slow with it. Steven, also looking to add more fish to the tank, looking at more wrasses, thinking either redline wrasse, brunus wrasse, and we'll be picking up a lid for my tank to help the jumpers. Definitely a good idea to have a lid. Um, wrasses are awesome. They're slightly a pain when they flip over frags, but otherwise I love them. Super cool fish. Fulament magnetic bed, 40, 50 bucks. I will look at that. PI is also great for adhesion. Not needing to scrape glass is great. Yeah, I don't know what I bought. I bought some very light textured thing, kind of a surface, and I believe it's like a sticker on the bottom. So I ordered some of that bros to look at glass. I'm going to put that on top. So I'm hoping that's going to be a good solution. But I will look up that magnetic bed later because I'm curious. How often do you clean your glass? I feel like I have to clean it every other day. That's probably about what I do, to be honest. It probably is every other day that I clean it. Um, some days I clean it daily. Some days it's every two to three days. But it does kind of get that little bit of a haze. I think that's just part of the deal. If light hits your glass, it's going to happen. So you could have lights that are more directional that don't hit the glass. And then you clean your glass less. However, you're losing a lot of that fill light when the light hits your glass it reflects back in and actually increases power in a lot of places so it kind of has its own benefits in that aspect so yeah um it's double-edged sword right you're gonna have healthier corals because light is bouncing underneath of it and it's gonna help the bottoms of your coral be healthier and grow right but the downside is then you have to worry about cleaning your glass more often uh, waiting on the FL Sun's Super Racer to arrive for work. I have not heard of that one. I will look that one up. Uploads by Tom. I got about six tabs of stuff I have to look into later now. <laughs> Anybody know the new Kamor tester will be available? I do not. But I'm looking it up right now. It's awesome to see more and more companies bringing auto testers out. Um, 
at the more we have, the more competition, it's going to be good. We'll help everyone kind of, you know, be more competitive, make cooler projects, hopefully better pricing. So all around, I think it's pretty cool to see more and more companies getting, getting into the auto tester game. Uh, my wife offered to take care of the tank and to do a water change. When I tried to teach her, she didn't understand the refractor meter, so I told her not to worry about it. Ah, figures. You need to get the Hannah one where you just plunk it in and dip it. Nice number on there. Super easy. It's the way to go. All right, guys. What are we at? Been a good hour. Good hour into it today. If you do have any other last questions, let me know. Uploads by Tom has given me about six tabs of 3D printer stuff I need to look up later. <laughs> and yeah, is there actually, that's another good question. Is there any products you think would be cool? Like I'm working on different prototypes for the Kelkster to see how they affect it and kind of how I can improve things on it. But I always like making new little products to improve stuff for roofing. So if you guys have any other cool products that you think would be fun to prototype and build, let me know because I'm always happy to play with stuff like that because I think it's fun. Um, I do have two, a couple other like ideas in the works as well. So once I test them more and prove it out, then I'll probably do some videos on stuff. But a few things in the prototyping stage right now. Uh, Sammy, anyone tested the one, two, three knockoff trade, tried into reagents yet? I have not. Um, I have heard of a few people that did and said it was basically the same thing. So it's kind of cool. It's nice to see other options out in the wild. Uh, the one thing I did do is I got my try and two test less frequency. So I'm still using the legit reagents, but my elk is testing two times a day and my calcium mag is testing one time a day. So my reagents last twice as long. So I haven't really bothered with the knockoff reagents because they now last twice as long as they did. So it's a good way to do it. And for the most part, I mean, calcium and mag once a day is perfect for me. Elk twice a day every 12 hours. Beautiful. I do have the Elkatronic as well. It does feel super overkill having two testers on it, but it's nice to have them to compare against each other, kind of keep each other honest. Um, have you tried the Hannah Mag? Is it too bad that some stores are not selling them? I have not tried the Hannah Mag. I, I've, I think I've heard a bit few mixed things on it, so I don't know. It's hard to say. You can make a nano filter roller, one that fits in an all in one. That would be cool. The only problem is there isn't really a standard size for all in ones. So it's a very thing. So it'd be hard to make one that fits in everything, unless it's like super small. But it would be pretty cool. Hmm. I will brainstorm later. The problem is I don't have a nano anymore to test on. But it could be fun. I would probably use one if I still had a nano, though. I like it. Uh, Alright, guys. I think I'm going to wrap her up for today. Ease myself back into it. Next week, I'm pretty sure I have Matt coming on who does coral imports. So I think that will be a fun one for next week. Um, today, shout out T4, T40 Reefer, Alan Brown, Dedicated Reefer, Aaron, and Aquarium Cabin Solutions. Thank you guys very much for the super chats. I do greatly appreciate it. Um, Sammy D. Hannah said they know about the issue. It's a reagent issue fix coming. Okay, awesome. That's good to hear. Uh, do you think clownfish would taste funny? It would probably taste like any other fish, but it'd be a very expensive snack, so I would avoid eating your pets. They're friendly. They're cute. Keep them. Um, good old clownfish. Yeah. You know how expensive it would be to eat those fish? On that random note, the fact that, like, to us, a yellow tang is, like, this beautiful fish, but you're in Hawaii, and they're like, hmm, dinner, here's a yellow tang. I'd, I'd feel bad to eat them, because it's a pet that you keep. Right? Uh, uploads by Tom, would you get a cage guardian K or a KH keeper? Seems to be the same price. I have not even heard of the cage keeper, so let me look that one up. Who makes that one? Hmm. Never even heard of the cage keeper. That one's all new to me. Visually, aesthetically, I like the look of it. Looks pretty cool. I don't even think it's released yet, though. The cage guardian, I've heard a lot of mixed things on it. So for that reason alone, I'm going to say probably the other one. Probably the cage keeper, but again, it's so new, I don't even think it's released yet. So there's probably not a lot of stuff on it. Now, the other 
<laughs> I just cracked another brew. Well, I still got a little bit left. If you guys got more questions, I'll talk. I'll keep at her for a bit. My throat's super dry right now, though. Um, so a big consideration when you're looking at auto testers, which people don't think consider first, is how much does your reagent cost? Because, like, the one reason I love the Alcatronic is because the reagent's super cheap. Like, I can buy a gallon of it, and that I'm set for, like, a year and a half. Like, it lasts me ages. Um, the Trident, and I kind of fudged it a bit to test half as much. So, again, now my reagent lasts twice as long. But you got to look at your cost per test and see how much it costs to run. Like, some people don't care, but I always look at the long-term cost of ownership of things and kind of, like, what's your best value for the long haul. So, food for thought. Uh, Reef Keeper Cage Plus. So, looks kind of cool. One liter lasts over 1,400 tests. Not bad at all. I like that. So, they're probably using a bulk reagent. Probably when you dilute. Oh, yeah. So, reagent mixed radio. One liter reagent to nine liters of RO water. So, hmm, super diluted. That's kind of cool. Has potential. Um, Cage Keeper has been out for a while in the UK, but not many be out in Canada yet. I assumed it was international. Yeah, the, the website I found it on showing the price in pounds, so it's definitely a UK thing. It's out of stock. But it look, it sounds actually kind of cool. So I would be curious to know someone's experience if anyone's tried it. Anyone know when the new Kimura tester? I do not. I haven't seen... I've only seen one thing about it yet that it was coming. So I'm going to blindly guess probably like a fall type of thing. Usually they announce them a few months ahead of time to build some hype on it. Not finding anything concrete for dates on it. Uh, I love my Trident. I buy a six months raging pack. Seems worth it for a few years. Love checking my app and other results. I, I do agree. Um, it does have nice integration. I just bought a six month pack sitting on my floor over there. So I'm with you on that one. Make that seven tabs. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, it does, it definitely has nice integration with the Apex. So when, when you open it, it does, it is nice having that chart of everything right at the top. Boom, we got it all right there. So, so that is definitely a nice appeal. Everything in one app is nice. I was half debating if I would got a second, second dose and just let it tweak all of my, all my parameters. We'll see. It does feel slightly overkill with the calcium reactor and the calc and the dosing, but at the same time, if I ran out of CO2, the calc and the dosing could pick up the slack, right? It kind of gives it a bit of a, a buffer for something else. Um, Devin, do you mess with the Frybox TV corals? Dude, I freaking love that channel. It looks like a dope Canadian store. Um, yeah, so he's actually he's pretty cool. I did a video with him probably two or three years ago. Um, he's based out of Toronto. And when I went out there, I went and, yeah, I went and shot a little store tour with him. I think, I think it's Marge, I think his name is. But yeah, super nice guy. Maybe I'll see if I can get him on for a stream one day. It could be fun. Uh, Scott, how long do you think SPS take to color back up after going brown from a tank crash? Every single one's going to be different. So there is no like straight up answer to that one. Certain ones will color up nice. Other ones can take months and months and months and months and months. So the biggest thing is just keeping your tank stable and letting them kind of resettle in. Like, on that note, I've had some corals actually that were growing too good in my other tank. So that green goblin anacropora was taking over that whole section. So I actually pulled the whole colony out, moved into this tank, which is now super bright green and seems to be growing well. But yeah, so I've been slowly rearranging housekeeping. Another one that's been doing really super well for me lately is a golden rod anacropora, which is good because that was an expensive one for a little while. It did nothing for a while, and now it's exploding. And I threw a chunk in this tank too, and it looks like it's doing pretty well so far. So that makes me happy. March, he has personality. He'd be a fun guest. Yeah, I'll see if I can lure him on one day. But where is that one I did a long time ago? How did I pull the link out of this one? Hey, <laughs> there you go. 
check that video out later. That is one I did with him a couple years ago now. Sadly, with like the whole pandemic and everything, it's been ages since I've went went anywhere fun for reef related content. So probably now that I have a kid, probably honestly, probably will be next year when I'll start doing it again. But you won't be able to stop talking. Probably true. But yeah, check out that video later. That's probably two to three years ago that I went and visited him and did that video. But it was fun. I'm going to lure Patrick from Reef Wholesale on again, too. He's always a fountain of information. Yeah, if there's any other people that you want to see on for guests, let me know. And I will bribe them to come on. About the haunted basement. <laughs> I will ask about the haunted basement. His basement's a crazy sump room of stuff. It's like, if you watch that video, we went down into the basement and all the stuff in it. So, I didn't know about the haunted aspect, though. That's that's the whole another part we got to dig into. All right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap her up today, though. Um, so, again, if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new and you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, all the standard YouTuber stuff, because it makes the YouTube algorithm happy, which lets more people find the channel. So, always appreciated. Thank you guys for the super chat as well. Um, you should have both Patrick and March on. I will. I don't know if they'll be on at the same time, but I will lure them on at different points for sure. Be guests. I was actually bugging Patrick yesterday about it, so... It will happen in the near future, I think. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out today. Happy Wednesday, and I will catch you guys.